All righty, there we go. All right, welcome everybody to an impromptu Saturday afternoon stream, Coffee and Art, now in the afternoon today. Uh, so I got some color books in my mail, so I thought I'm going to go ahead and stream it because I can't wait till Monday. Plus I went to Hobby Lobby and got a few things, so I'm going to show you that. This is uh, a book I've already, you know, I ordered this a while back and um, had not done anything in it and I said you know because in some books I try to use a certain pencil in this one a different pencil in that one you know uh, watercolors in this one neo color twos in that one well in this one I decided that I would at least start just using my Crayola my Crayola markers and I re I reorganize them all into their nice little bundles <laughs> Sarah, stop! Stop singing, Sarah! You gotta have that, that song's gonna be stuck in my head. <laughs> so I bundled them up, and these are probably, they come in a pack of 50, so this is probably maybe two and a half sets all total. Um, but I bundled them by color, and it's got a little dark with this, but we'll see how it goes when I start showing things. So I bundled them, like there's my purples, my pinks and reddish purples, my pinks light pinks and flesh colors, dark blue, light blues, green blues or turquoise colors, and then here's light greens, dark greens, browns, yellows, oranges and reds, and grays. So I have them all bundled by, so I, if I want a color, I just pick up a bundle like this. It's just so easy to me. And this is, and I do the same thing with uh, my Prisma colors for the most part, is then if they're in a bundle like this, I can just pick it up and do this, find the color I want, pull it out, and there you go. When I'm done with it, you know, just stick it back in the, uh, yeah, I know, right? They do. I don't know why um, they started that, but that's true. They do. They will censor that, <laughs> and so anyway, um, yeah. So it's just real easy to, you know, fan through your colors just like it is with pencils. You have them in a bundle. You can just do this, find what you want. And it's just easy, right? And then the ones I use all the time, I've shown y'all. I just put them in, you know, a tray like this. Is it too dark, guys? I can turn on another lamp. But I wasn't quite sure if it was too light or too dark because of the time of day. It's a different time of day when I usually stream because normally when I stream, the sun is like beating right through my window right here, right over there. So anyway, so this is how I, um, I keep most of my pencils that I'm using like all the time. <clears throat> so anyway... That being said, what I've been doing is, y'all let me know if it's too dark, I'll turn on the other light, because, I don't know, I don't want it to flash out, but, so, what, I, what I've been doing in this book is I've been starting with, um, <laughs> uh, using those markers, and what I've been doing is not, like, coloring one page, but just picking out different things that, like, uh, let's say red flowers so I take my red and I go through and just pick out all the red flowers that I want to do and that's how I've been working in this although I, I do have one page right here that I'm a little further along in so this one I did color the background black acrylic paint and then did all the stars and the way the rays and all that coming out of the sacred heart um, and I, that's all I've done. I haven't done any of these other little emblems around. Yeah, <laughs> uh, probably at least two, Jean. <laughs> so this is, um, this is one of the pages that I've got farther in. Other than this one, though, I'm just going to start flipping from the back so you can kind of see. This was already black. All the rest of the pages that you're going to see that are black were already that. They, the book came that way, okay? Um, but we've done a flip of this before, and I know it's going to flash out because of the white. But um, So it's some pink flowers there and some little pink things there. Thanks, Jennifer. This one, um, the black was already on her 
kimono i've added the red now i haven't done any shading see i haven't done any shading with this yet i've just taken the markers and base coated it and then what i'll do is let me just grab a red here what i'll do is i'll go in and and start shading and doing you know more more to it uh, but right now, all the pages that you're going to see are pretty much, unless I say otherwise, just have a little bit of marker. And these are just the watercolor mark. You know, the uh, they're not even watercolor. Water-based Crayola markers. They're just a little Crayola marker. So, like I just sat in front of the TV and picked up a red marker and went through. Then I might pick up, this was already black. A little bit of green. Now, before I really, I should have, I should have tested a little better. On this page, I was watching TV and not really paying a lot of attention, so I was really coloring hard. In other words, if you want to use markers like these Crayola markers on a color book page, and this is thicker, it's thicker than copy paper, but not much. Okay, not much thicker than copy paper. But you know, it's usually fine when you use these as long as you're not scrubbing with them if you go like one two three four you'll scrub 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 it'll start to go through and i was this was the first page i did and i wasn't paying too much attention so it almost see it ghosted a little there it almost went through so after seeing that then i was more careful i didn't do a lot of layers right i just did you know carefully did one layer and then now it's fine i mean the the rest of the pages are fine but you, you have to test, you have to test your uh, Crayola markers to make sure that they're not going to go through. Of course, alcohol-based markers, it goes without saying, they will go through. So I've already done a flip through this book uh, when I first got it, you know, when I ordered it. But I'm just kind of showing you, like here I did a little green bug, a little bit of yellow on the B. So I would just pick a marker and just start, you know, doing little bits. And then again, this is the one that I've got the farthest on. It's all, it started out, I outlined this, I outlined this in the red marker and then shaded the rest with pencil. This is all marker and then a tiny bit of red. But it's yellow, orange, and red marker. Then I just kind of blend it a little bit with a little bit of red. And then all the rest of this is pencil on top of the acrylic paint. Now the reason you can do this the reason you can do those um, rays and the stars on top of black is because it's acrylic paint. You can't do this on top of pencil. If I had um, penciled all that in with black pencil, you could not do those white, green, orange rays on top of black pencil. It just won't work. It has to be acrylic paint. So, yeah, so that's as far as I got on that one. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so here we got, this girl looked like she was wrapped up in a lemon peel. I'm not sure if that's the idea, but I'm going to make it half lime, half lemon. So I did some with the lemon, uh, yellow, and then I'm going to do some with the lime. Because it just kind of looks like she's in a lemon peel. Right? <laughs> I'm not sure. So I'm going to do her in um, lemon and lime peel. Um, I did a, a ribbon here. And this is a little tricky getting in there, I'll tell you, in the, in the ditch of the book. But I did all the lacing and the ribbon in a blue. And that's just, that's all with just the light blue marker. And then what I'll do is I'll take, I'll take a darker blue. And start, you know, adding shading and detail. Let me just do one right here. And just go back and do more detail. I'll hold it up here in a second. Hey, Lori, for your covered in glue. What are you working on if you're going to be covered in glue? Let me 
just going to do this one ribbon here. So you can kind of see how you can base coat something with a marker and then go back. So like here's without any and then here's with. So you see how you can shade it with a pencil on top of the marker? Like that. So that's the idea behind all of the marker. Is then go back and do this kind of thing over it while you're working on it. But I got the lace, like it's like a corset, right? And then there's a ribbon. Um, this one I started with a little broom, some sunflowers, and some straw. Hey, Dot! And again, no shading yet, but it's just, it's so fun to be able to have the base coat already there, and then to be able just to go in and do a little bit of shading. You don't have to do much. See, just that little bit right there. That to that. So that's my plan, man, for this book. It's just to, you know, when I just don't want to have to think about anything, I just take my markers and just fill in. Now these um, were a light orange, and then I did go in and shade with the darker orange. That one. And then these little pea pods or seed pods or whatever kind of pods. Some kind of pods. <laughs> oh, what else? And I started doing some water lilies here. And a little yellow moon. Um, not a whole lot yet in this one. I did some uh, kind of some cran cran apples or something. I didn't want to look. I want them to look like an exotic, unknown fruit, so I did them in teal. <laughs> so I did these little apples or whatever they are, in um, a a color of um, marker. This color marker. This and there's no names on. Them. I can't tell you a number. But anyway, I did. I base coated them in this color, then went on top of it with pencil and shaded the little apples or whatever they are. So there's that one. I need to refocus my camera, I can tell. This was already black in the background. Lotus pods, thanks Sarah, lotus pods. Okay, so I think that's all I got done in this one. So this is the Color Me Enchanted, again, let me move some Step out of the way here, refocus. When you show a lot of white, it wants to um, it wants to unfocus. Let's see what I can do. If it gets too dark, guys, tell me, because I don't have a lot of lights on, because. Um, it's a different time of day in here. There we go. It just needs some propping up because of the lamp. So anyway, that's the one that I'm working in with markers, with the Crayola markers. Okay, so let me show you what I got in the mail. What did I do with them? Oh, where did I put them? Oh, here we go. So I'll show you the first one. Laura enabled me on this one. She knew I was getting this one. I'm just using this to prop up the, just to have it a little bit of anti-glare. So, the Mysterious Library, and Laura did a flip of this one. So, I'll just do a kind of a quick flip, but if you want to see a page-by-page, page, look at um, Anxiety Art Adventures, Laura. She did a complete page-by-page page of this. So, it's the Mysterious Library, A Coloring Book Journey into Fables. And it's all uh, different fairy tales and fables. When Laura was doing it, they were trying to figure out, and it is in the back. It's in the back which ones are represented, the princess and the pea, the red shoes, you know, all of them are named in the back. Um, so 
she enabled me. I had to buy this one when I saw it. <laughs> hey, Christy. And I haven't got the spine mashed on this one yet. So I'll just do a kind of a quick little flip. Can y'all see okay? I think it's showing up all right. I'll just do a quick flip here. Isn't that cool though? This one goes this way, castle. Rapunzel. That'll be a fun one. Look at that hair there. Just a quick flip here. So you can see. Isn't that cool though? Look at that. It's gonna be so fun. So I'm blaming Laura on this one. Because <laughs> she showed a flip of this and I said, I gotta get that one. But when I went to get this one, of course I found a couple others. There's the princess and the pea. And um I am waiting on my uh, Paula markers, um, and I told y'all this last week. <laughs> I ordered Myth Morphia. It's on, you know, pre-order. So I ordered it when I ordered my 80 Hoo Hoo Hero markers. <laughs> well, I went with free shipping. So my markers aren't shipping till Myth Morphia ships. <laughs> So, but that's okay. I can wait. I can wait till, you know, Miss Morphia ships. But I was wondering why everybody was getting Jan uh, uh, Janet and uh, the, and um, uh, Eileen got some and for uh, Jen and Eileen got hers. Everybody's getting their markers. I went, wow. Why isn't my why aren't my markers shipping? Well, that's why I bundled them with a the, with the pre-order. Uh, and I could go in there and separate them out and all that and pay for shipping, but it's okay. I'll just wait. It's too much trouble. I'll just wait till they get <laughs> I know, isn't it? Look. Look at that snow globe. Hey, Donna. You ordered Myth Morphia? Yeah. Um, I think the girls in, in Europe have got it already. I'm not positive. Uh, I did see somebody said they were coloring it in it or something, but um, as far as I know here, it doesn't ship until the 11th uh, from Amazon. Kirby's book. And so then here's all the different stories that are in there. So that's a mysterious library. Thank you, Laura, for the enabling. Um, so these are the other two I got, and I haven't really looked through them, because I just got them today, they came in the mail today, and then I had to go run errands, and then I came back and ate, and then here we are. So I haven't even looked at these other than the two pages that they show you on Amazon. You know, they show you a couple of preview pages, and that's all I've seen. So I haven't even really thoroughly looked through these. So we're going to be looking through these together. Sip of coffee. <laughs> and then I have a little bit of a Hobby Lobby haul. A mini haul. So, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I was going to ask you, Ange, are you going to be showing Paula's haul on your show? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'll say. That's all I'll say. So it's Manic Botanic. <laughs> so, and these are one-sided, and it is thin. They're thin. It's, a, it's got a little, hey, Terry Trouble, it's got a little bit more tooth than your average um, copy paper, but it's as thin as copy paper, but it's got some, it's a little bit of tooth to it. So I'm not sure what kind of paper they printed it on, but they're one-sided. So if you wanted to use any markers or anything on this, you know, just tear it out or put a, you know, put something behind it. So it, obviously, so it doesn't go through. Did you get some? 
<laughs> no, Gene. Gene, you're so funny. So yeah, um, like here, you got to kind of look close because there's some, they're in there, you know, a lot of detail. I mean, I'm glad somebody else did the Zentangle because I sure wouldn't. <laughs> that's a lot of, that's a lot of uh, detail. But again, if you like gel pens or like the Crayola markers, you can get in there real tight with those. But even with this, I would definitely put something behind it, even with the Crayola water kids markers, because it probably will go through even that. But if it's one sided, it doesn't really matter. And if it's an eight and a half by 11 side, this may be a little bigger. Um, I take those out and put them in a binder. Yeah. But this would also be a good one to do a watercolor wash. Again, it will wrinkle it because it's thin. But you got it if you were if you were careful with your water, you could uh, neo color these, and then you know almost like a grayscale where a lot of the shading would be done for you, because it's so heavily lined, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, and how I usually tackle that, Jean, is like if it's a, a lot of green in the back, I'll just do a complete wash of green over that and then go in there and pick out the flowers after the wash is dried. You know, so like the, the same thing for the frogs. One wash of green over the whole frog and then just go in there and pick out some dark green. That's how I do these kind of pages. Uh, these little bitty tiny detail pages is I'll do a wash and then just go in there and pick out. Um, you know, there's an octopus, same thing. If you wanted to do a purple octopus, and seriously, this is almost all octopus. There's maybe a little bit of background showing. I would completely put a coat of uh, acrylic wash, water down some acrylic paint, and do a complete wash over this whole thing, let it dry, and then go in there and pick out the details. I might do that in a minute. Let me put a post-it note on this one. I mean, I won't color the whole page. I'll do the wash. <laughs> so you can do that with a big, um, a page with lots of detail like that. In other words, I wouldn't probably go in here and color every one of these branches. I'd probably just color a nice wash of brown over all of them. <laughs> Pedro! Yes, Janet! Pedro! Oh. But isn't it cool? I mean, I love the look of Zentangle. I just don't want to do it, you know? <laughs> That's just... I don't have the patience for it like... Uh, Janet and some of the other of y'all do can do some awesome Zentangle. I don't have the patience to do Zentangle. Well, I can say I just let's put it this way. I don't enjoy doing it. I could if I had to. I've done a little, but I don't enjoy it at, like some people do. Look at that. Isn't that cute? Look at the eye. So I just want to show it real quick. I don't think I've seen this any, anybody do a flip of this. I mean, I'm sure somebody has. I just haven't seen it. But uh, this reminds me of like um, Art Nouveau almost, you know. The lines, the flow, it just reminds me of an Art Nouveau style. Does it, y'all? See a couple of lizards there, chameleons. It's so, it, Zentangle looks cool. I love the way it looks when I see it on something, but just to do it, mm -mm. See just that little bit of checkerboard in the in the moth up there. Okay, tree tree tray. <laughs> it's tree moss, but I call her tray. And the turtles. Look at these owls. 
the pine cones. Isn't that cool though, guys? And it's quite thick. Bees. There's quite a lot in this book. Rooster. The hen down here. Flamingos. Eileen's not here, is she? <laughs> but look how cool the detail. See, it's just got a touch of Zentangle-ness to it. You know, a little bit almost Celtic knot looking. Thanks, Jennifer. Jennifer put the link in. Yeah, Manic Botanic. Some lobsters. Elephants. Snakes. Um, moths. I think those are moths. Lunar moths. Like one right there in the middle, maybe. Lunar? I guess it should be Luna. Luna moths. Lunar. <laughs> oh, flowers. It's an alligator in there. Another bit, like, I think he comes around this way. Some birds. Turkeys. Eagle. A couple of eagles there. I think those are eagles. Beetles. Eagles and now beetles. Those horned beetles. I know it's so detailed. That's why I said button um, to do a wash over. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you on the uh, uh, octopus in a minute. Oh, wait, I got something from Denise. It may be a thing on the... The girls are down in Florida at cheer competition. Oh, no, that's there. They're just playing around before the competition, it looks like. Swimming pool and all that. Bat, a bat and a spider web. Some rhinos. Like this one, look, it's looking right at you. Some little mice. A turnip. Cows or long longhorn steer. Speaking of longhorn steer, on all the girls down in uh, San Antonio, I hope they're having a good time. Jen, our Australian lady, and her husband, who are taking a two-month tour of the United States. Um, they've left, they went from San Francisco to Vegas to Oklahoma to Dallas. Now they're down in San Antonio. Then I think they're going to Louisiana. And then I think they're going to Florida and then back up to see me. I think that's the plan. I mean, no, no, wait. No, I think they're going up to Tennessee in that first because Jen's sister or somebody I think they're going up to Tennessee and then back down to Florida then back up through Atlanta and then over into Virginia and other on up the east coast I probably have that all wrong don't quote me don't email me <laughs> that means so much these days <laughs> um, some ostriches these are good these are cute Hey, Kenny, who else have I missed? I'm sure there's a bunch of people popping in I'm missing. Thanks, everybody, for popping in. Just an impromptu Saturday, showing a couple of uh, color books I ordered that came in today and a little bit of a Hobby Lobby haul, and we'll see. As long as it doesn't turn out to be Gilligan's Island three-hour tour. <laughs> ah, ah, gee. <laughs> Some seahorses. See, there's a lot in this book, isn't there? Zebras, ibis maybe, or a heron, heron, and some just random butterflies and beetles and flowers, and that's it. There's a lot in that. Manic Botanic, and there's the author and all. 
So I got that one. And then the last one I got was Myth and Magic, an enchanted fantasy coloring book. And it's by Kenyuko Y. Craft. I'm not sure. Anyway, there it is. Can't get any closer than that because it'll flash out. I don't have autofocus on. So this is the last one. Yes. Um, yeah, Janet and Jean are switching stream times on Monday because um, Jean's got something to do. That She's got a date. Jean's got a date um, Monday evening. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this one. Again, I haven't looked through it because I just got This one's perforated, I think. No, maybe. No. No, it's just the way this first page is. It's not. Wait, it is perforated. Is it perforated? It's semi-perforated. I can't. No, I don't think it is. I think that's just the dent from that first page. So, Myth and Magic, a coloring book by K-I-N-U-K-O. Can you go Y craft? Let's read this. Painting is my language, my poetry, my therapy, my meditation, my passion. It's everything. It is me. It is who I am. When I look at paintings created by the masters of the Italian Renaissance, I am filled with the presence of the artist, as if the artist's energy is still there, somehow captured in, that, in the pigment. The color and light dazzle and enchant me, propelling me to another time and place with a feeling of eternity. When I was invited to create a coloring book of line drawings, I was excited to share my work, yet felt the challenge of working without my beloved paint, the dazzling full spectrum of color and pure pigments. I long to experience the tactile, sensual energy of direct contact between my hand, the paint, and the surface. I want to convey all the emotion of each illustration to its fullest expression. How could I achieve that without paint? Yet after creating the first few sketches, I delighted in the idea that you and I will craft a masterpiece together. So, please, lose yourself in stories of mythic beings, heroines, fairy princesses, and enchanted landscapes as you imbue each illustration with jewel-like tones or subtle hues to make it your own. My line compositions are an invitation for you to fall in love with color. Artists don't create as a gift to others. They create for themselves because it fulfills some inner need. So listen to your inner voice and tell your own version of those stories. My wish is that you will embrace your coloring journey and ignite your passion for color. And then he, he or she, could be a she. I'm not sure if, uh, if uh, Kanuko is a girl or a guy. You can look it up, you know. Just just got the book today. Okay, so on the back side of every page is some, a little emblem here. I just took a peek to see. <laughs> and um, so they're all different fairy tales. Or fantasy, I should say. Not necessarily fairy tales, but fantasies. There's a dragon, a princess, and some other creatures. And so see, it's a different, it's a different uh, little emblem on the backs of the pages. There's a mermaid with a bell. She's, she's hugging a bell. And she's also got fairy wings. I don't know that I've ever seen a mermaid with fairy wings. Probably have, but it's just not coming to me. But isn't that, look at the borders and everything. So, um, Janet, isn't it so illuminated, alphabet, illuminated manuscript? And again, a different little emblem on this side. This is almost like Joan of Arc type warrior princess something. A fair maid. Is that a thing, Terry? Really? A fair maid instead of a fairy or a mermaid? Is it called a fair maid? I like it. Did you make that up, Terry, or, or is that a thing? 
And here's a little deer and castles. A fair maid. I like that. You made it up. I gotta write that down. Terry Trouble, fair maid. <laughs> I'm gonna put that on that page. <clears throat> and then here's a an angel. Yes. Yeah, I guess you could spell F A E R, Sarah. Yeah, F A E R. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that cool? And then there's a little dragon over here. This reminds me like of a folk art, rose mauling type thing. And here's a girl holding like a crystal ball. Just kind of, there's so much detail. You can, if you really take your time to look at each one, right? This looks like another mermaid. And then there's a little shell. Every side of this side has uh, a different emblem. This is a tiny one. This is a tiny one. And this is one that would be hard to do a complete wash on because you'd have so many different... Ooh, now this is kind of creepy. This is a half girl, half leopard. I'm not sure I like that one. <laughs> oh, here's another... No, see it? It seems like it oh, wants to be perforated, but it's not. Hmm. A dragonfly winged fairy. Yes, I know, the tiny spaces. This is a tiny space one. But it was so... Oh, and there's titles on them. I didn't even see. Let's go back to the... There's She's got titles. This one's called Sunken City. The one with the bell there. Like this one's called Dream of Orchids. I didn't even notice the titles down there. And look what it has created or colored by. It has a place for you to sign your name. And then there's the title. And then there's the artist drawn by. And then there's the title. And But look, colored by. Isn't that cool? I don't know that I've seen that. Have you all seen that on any color books? colored by this one's called five birds claire's wings little girl with wings and her little dog sitting on a little um, island in a pond in the middle of a pond isn't that smart unicorn oh see it is perforated okay they're just so that's a tight perf <laughs> it's such a nice perforation because it, you know when they're really a, a open spaced perforation they tear real easily but i just accidentally kind of pulled up on it and it started to tear so it is perforated but it's such a tight perforation you can barely see it This one is called Byzantine Sanctuary. See, now I should go back and read all the titles. <laughs> For Beloved Wolf 832F. That's the title, 832F. That must be, okay, if it's For Beloved Wolf 832F, that must be a person. That must be there. Um, I bet we could find them on Instagram or Twitter. <laughs> Yeah, I do like that color by. Isn't that isn't that cool? And it's one sided, so if you wanted to tear them out and frame them or put them in like I would, in uh, uh, sleeves, you know, in your uh, your page protector sleeves. Titania, Titania and fish. 
guardian and then there's a big like world right there I know aren't they cool guys ancient orient see I started pulling up right there and tearing it out Beauty and the Beast There you go, Jean. Jean's gonna go see that. Yeah. Um Oh, look at this one. I love her hair. This one's called Winter Rose. Look at that hair, guys. Oh my gosh. Don't you just want to color, color, color? Oh, 832F is Yellowstone's most famous wolf. He died. Oh, Jean, I did not know that. I got to write that down. 832F, Yellowstone's most famous wolf. Oh, Jean, thank you. Wolf who died. Thanks, Jean. No idea. I've been to Yellowstone, but this was like back in the 80s. I don't think that wolf was there then. So, let's see. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, she had a GPS collar. Oh, is that the one that got shot? Okay, I did not know that that was the... I mean, I've heard of that story, what happened, but I didn't know that was this wolf. Well, there's the... There's like a, a memorial to that wolf. It was a female. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jean. I did not know that. Still Life. Night Song. And there's a little row of little fairies with their candles. Starry Night. Another, another mermaid page. Female. Okay, female. Okay, thanks, Jean. Dragonflies. And it's a dragon with dragonfly wings. See, that's the kind of thing we'd like to do. We like to do those combo things. Neptune's Daughter. That one's very cool. Isn't that cool, guys? Just holding a little dragon. The Griffin and Angel. Dragon Phoenix and Flying Lizard. Beloved. So a little unicorn and like a butterfly fairy. This reminds me of that tapestry. Leslie's Feather Tree, Chinese Angel, so pretty. Mask, Snow Sprite, Flora. I think this is the last one. Those eyes will be fun to do. I think that's it. Yeah, the end. Isn't that neat? It is a little detailed. It, it would be a, a tricky one. But so was this one that we showed. I showed. So these were the three I got in the mail today. Okay. And then um, this one right here, I wanted to show you how you could take something... As long as it's all like one thing, the this book right here that I just showed has it's multiple things. You know, it's you can't just do like one big wash over the whole thing. But something like this, like this Pedro octopus here, <laughs> you could. So what I wanted to show you, and then I'm gonna show you my Hobby Lobby haul. Uh, it's getting a little dark in here. Let's take a little dioxazine purple. And I'm going to water it down. See, it got dark, but I don't want to flash it out. So I think I'd rather have it a little on the dark side here so it doesn't flash out. So I'm just going to put a little bit of paint, okay, and water. 
just going to take my spray bottle here, water this down. I should get out one of my new paint brushes, but I'll wait. <laughs> Let's see. <gasps> Whoa, almost knocked my lamp over. I don't see if I got enough water there because I want this to be very, very watery. It has to be, you have to water down your acrylic paint enough to make it translucent or just use watercolor. But the thing about acrylic paints is it gives your pencil tooth, I mean, it gives a paper tooth for your pencil to, um, to stick to or to work on top of. Okay, so let's just make sure that's thin enough. Yeah, it's thin enough. Now, it will buckle your paper some. I expect it. So I don't freak out about it, but if you don't like your paper to buckle at all, just be aware, <laughs> you know, it will buckle your page. So what I'm going to do here, though, is I can cover the whole, this is all one big octopus, right? I need a little bit more water. And I'm going to just do the whole background. Now I'm not scrubbing it do one coat like see how I'm just kind of putting the brush like real quick along if you start scrubbing it you're going to go through the book oh and I should have put something behind it just to make sure because um, this is thin but it's usually not it's not the paint that goes through it's the water so what I'm trying to say is don't be rubbing and scrubbing because you'll put a hole through your paper so you got a little thinner right there. That's okay. So then you can get a watercolor look. You just got to make sure you keep it thin enough so you can still see your lines. And I don't care if it goes out because when I do these kind of pages, I cut out. I'll cut like right along that edge and then mount it on black paper. Yeah, I know. Yeah, thanks, Terry. Put something behind that page. I know. I just thought of it at the last minute. This could just use a little bit more. Now, if you do want it darker, then you want to dry it in between. You also have to dry it completely before you start doing any um, uh, color pencil. But this is how you can start on it. Okay. Um, let's see if my heat gun's still working. <laughs> Come on, baby. One more time. <laughs> there it goes. Remember last week it quit working there for a minute. Night dragonfly, sleep well. So I did get a little darker. It's cloudy out, but I didn't want the white paper to flash out. So I'm leaving it a little darker in here without all my five lamps on. So real quick now, I'm just going to do a quick little demo. We'll, we'll color it in, that, in better later. Let me see here. Grab a couple pieces. Okay, let me sharpen this white. And see which, probably the lightest one because that's too much the same all right so now what you can do let me sharpen this one too is you can get in here now and start coloring and adding detail and you already have a nice base to work with And then let's say we want to go white around those little suckers. And we'll shade under them. I'm just going to do this one little section here. I can barely see because I'm not zoomed in or anything. And now I'm going to take my dark purple. Just so you can see that you can work on top of an acrylic base so much quicker than trying to do this all from scratch with pencil.
Okay, I'm going to take the lighter just to do a little blending. Missed a spot right here. Could almost get just a little bit darker in there. Well, I can't show you too much there. See? Can y'all even see that? Right in here where we did all the coloring. So you can go from like this to that that quickly. Hey Lindare. Hi Natalie. Anybody else popping in? And see, that doesn't take that long. That didn't take that long just to do that one little tentacle like that. See? Yeah. So that's how you can take a wash over a whole page when it's something that you can do that with. Like here are these, here's a, um, frogs. I could do the same thing with that all green. Paint that all green. Even practically all this. And then go in, if you want a little blue sky, just go in there with blue pencil on top of the light green. See? So you can, this is the kind of book that that kind of thing will work on. Again, you could do this all yellow, green around the edges, green down here, and then just do the bird different, you know. So, in other words, it doesn't have to be just necessarily one color, but you can get big areas done. <laughs> Jean Green! You can get big areas done with a wash. Okay, and then just go back in there and even uh, if you want even brighter white, you can get your Posca. And, you know, get in there with that. Hang on, I'll just do a little bit right here just so you can see. And Orla did send me some Poscas for my birthday. I have used a couple of in a brown. There's some good colors. I haven't really perfected them yet, but I have used them. So you can see, you can get in there. And it got a little messy, but you can just go in there and fix it. And Isn't that cool? This book right here, um, Kim, is Manic Botanic. And I did a flip of it and I did record it. So that one, this one, and this one I ordered, I think, well, about a week and a half ago or something. And um, yeah, so I got these three in today. And I'm expecting Myth Morphia and my he, he my who who hero markers on April 11th because me bundled that free shipping. <laughs> don't say anything, Janet. Okay, so now let me show you what I got. Oh, this I don't know if I ever showed you this. I I was just using it to prop up, but let me show you this. This is a cool little book. I think I got it last week, maybe. I don't think I showed it to you, but it's a for me. This isn't a, a how to draw book. These kind of books, and there's a whole bunch of those, how to draw a thousand, or I think it's 50 or 100 flowers, how to draw 100 plants, how to draw, you know, there's all these kind. To me, these kind are not, um, for me, instructional videos on how to draw things. They're great for kids. I even said, hey, Cam, after I look at this, do you want it? He went, no. <laughs> it's even too simple. It's a very, very simple book. What I liked about it, were the ideas, okay? Not the how-to. But the, but if you really want to just like learn how to draw, say, a penguin from a, from a line, see, it does show you kind of a little step-by-step. -step. But they're very simplistic, almost childlike. Nothing wrong with that. I love it. Uh, drawings. Uh-oh, there's a flamingo. Sorry. <laughs> Eileen's going to watch this recording and go, what the? That's three times you've shown flamingos in one show. 
you have this book, Natalie. So, you know, for me, I'm not, I don't, I don't do step by steps like this when I'm drawing. I draw the shape and go from there. But, you know, it's, it's just, there's so much in it, right? It's just lots of ideas. And it's broke out by categories. Let me tell you the categories. They have, of course, getting started, your materials and all that. Then I have a section on animals, people, plants, foods, around the house, architecture and sites, vehicles, and seasons. And so it's just really, you know, there's the materials. See, it starts with the animals. I think they said, then it goes underwater and different, you know, flying ones, um, bugs, dinosaurs. Then it gets into people. It has expressions, clothes, occupations. I just, I just saw this at Books a Million last, I think it was last week. And I, uh, I said, oh, it's just too cute. I have to have it. So, and when you have coupons and a sale, 20% off, you know, a purchase or something, you know, it, you know, you got to get it, right? So, yeah, it would be great for a classroom. But anyway, I, like I said, I got it for all the ideas. Because you know how we like to do our mixed combination things and our lists and everything? This would be a good one to add to your list, add to your lists of whatever things. But anyway, everyday events, you know, just, I don't know, challenge, you can do a date book. Of course, you know, I'm not going to do all that. Weather, zodiacs, animal alphabet, and here, it's like this. I think I have one of these, 20 ways. It's not to draw a cat, but it's like maybe plants or something. 20 ways to draw a plant, uh, draw flowers. And it's not just flowers, though. There's plants and all kinds of things in it. But they're, they're really inspirational to me. Again, I'm not like tutorialing these. <laughs> you know, I'm not doing a step out on these. But just the ideas in them. I thought this was... Anyway, I'm just using that to prop up my stuff. All right, so what I got at Hobby Lobby. Yeah, if you go to look for this book, also look. And they're different artists do that. This one's Chica Miata. But there's different artists that do the 20s, the 20 ways to draw things. There's a couple different artists that do that. So, yeah. You have the tree one, Terry. Yeah, they're very inspirational. Whether you even just start with the basic. Like, you know, you could just start with something and then expand on it. All right, so Hobby Lobby. Clearance and sales. <laughs> so all their single brushes by uh, Master's Touch, that's the Hobby Lobby brand, were 50% off. So you, I'm going to un unbox them here with you as well. <laughs> They're all 50% off. Now Master's Touch, I usually don't buy many of these because for when, when I use my acrylics and stuff, um, you know, I'm hard on my brushes. I usually buy the craft brushes, which I'm going to show you. I bought some of those, too. But I just buy, you know, craft brushes. And usually I like the plastic handle ones because they'll never, um, you know, wood ones can uh, chip. Yeah, Jean likes brushes. Uh, she just got into watercolor recently. And so now none of these are very expensive, Jean. Um, and I did not buy watercolor brushes. These are just uh, mixed media, general, you know, and that's usually what I buy. The white synthetic ones, they last a good while, but I'm rough on them. Look, I don't know if you can see that. Look how flared out that is. That's a, that's a flat angled brush. <laughs> see, but for what I do with them, I'm not very rarely, and I do have nice brushes if I ever want to do oil painting. I have some nice watercolor brushes. I don't use those for when I'm doing my color books, and you saw me slosh on that wash of purple paint. That's all these, these kind of brushes. Occasionally, I'll get a master's touch when I want a liner brush. Uh, like this okay so I have a couple here's here these are master touches they're wood they're nice uh, but they're nicely coated with a varnish so they're not going to peel apart right did you manage to get no I look at the stickles they had the packs of Christmas colors and stuff like that so I didn't get them 
I didn't get the stickles. But these, I love, these are my favorite liner brushes. Look how long that is. See how long that, those bristles are? And these are the Master's Touch. Now, because I have four or five of these that are still fine, I did not buy any new liner brushes, but they're, they're all 50% off. And I think today's the last day, and they're closed on Sunday. So anyway, um, this is the first time I've been to Hobby Lobby all week. Or in a, let's see, how do I get them out of the little, okay, i got to get some scissors. I think they have a little thing to tear on the back, but uh, I'll just rip it with the scissors. Um, I haven't been for oh, probably two weeks to Hobby Lobby. I went to Michael's about a week and a half ago, maybe. So, um, yeah. So I bought three of them. I'll tell you the prices and which ones I got. So the and the, the and like I said, all the master touches are fifty percent off. So yeah, yeah, Jean's laughing at me. Yeah, I haven't been all week. So this one is normally seven ninety nine. So I got it for four dollars, and they're nice guys. Uh, you know, you really this would be a nice watercolor one. It's very soft hair. Um, you know, knowing me though, I'll probably plop it in some acrylic because I didn't pay a lot for it. <laughs> But if you pay a lot for your brushes, don't don't be rough on them like I am with acrylics. So there's this little angle brush. See how nice and sharp that is? Ooh, love me a new angle brush. Just saying. Look at that sharp. Sharp, sharp, sharp. <laughs> so that one's normally, I think that was the most expensive of the three. That one was eight bucks. This one was $4.99, so this one was $2.50. I'm just trying to get the uh, little plastic off the back, and then it's st it's, it has a little piece of double stick tape that's holding it on this. I think a dollar of it's probably packaging. Okay, so see, it's got a little piece of double stick tape to hold it to the packaging. So this one is just a round. It's just a, what number is it? It's a number two round. So. Again, nice for getting in little tight places. But these Master Touch those are nice. These are nice brushes. Okay. Then the last one that I got here was normally $4.59. Again, 50% off. And get the sticky off. And the thin ones like this one that's a kind of a liner, um, they all they come with the plastic on them. Of course, I never keep them on there. So, and then you got to wet them to get the sizing off. They have a sizing on them. Make sure. I can't stress this enough. <laughs> Make sure you wash that sizing off. And most nice brushes have that sizing in them. So when you feel the brushes, they go, oh, that's so stiff. They're so, they have a sizing on them. You got to wash that off. And make sure you wash that off before you dip it in the paint. Just saying, wash that sizing off. Now, if you're a watercolorist, you probably would do that anyway. But you want to get all that sizing off so they're not stiff anymore. Now, it's still springy, but it's not, you know, all the hairs aren't stuck together. And this one was a um, script, a, a number one script liner. Okay. So those are the three brushes I got. Again, 50% off each. And we're going to throw them right in here because we're going to use them. The other brushes I got, wait for it. No, I think I'll wait till the, yeah, I'll go ahead and show you now. <laughs> I'm so bad, aren't I? Okay, so then I got some more brushes. This one I used my 40% off coupon on because this pack, and again, this is probably the most that I've ever spent on a pack of brushes. Okay, and it's because I'd never seen this pack before. So it's $24.99 for the whole pack of brushes, but I used a 40% off coupon. So I got it for like $14.99, something like that. Bam! Because I love me some white acrylic, uh, the white, you know, the, the, the white, the, the acrylic. What? No, white talcon. White, they're acrylic. 
so anyway, again, it's good for watercolor acrylic. You know, it's not really for like oil painting or anything. But th these are the kind of brushes I use all the time in my acrylic work. <laughs> I know, right? So let's just take a moment to pet. Because I throw the packaging away. Take it out of the package and throw the packaging away. So I got all these <laughs> for like 14 bucks, something like that. All right, so let's see. Oh, it's got a zipper pouch. Looky this. Oh, wait, you got to cut that because it won't let you do the slide. It's got like the Ziploc bag. <laughs> I just pulled it apart so it doesn't matter because it's all going in the trash anyway. So let's see about getting it out of there. Okay, let's just do this because I'm not saving that bag. I'm going to get all right, so we're taking out the bag. Let's take each one out. <laughs> uh, Lang Nickel have good brushes. Yes, they do. These are decent. They're decent brushes. I'm telling you, Royal Lang Nickel has d decent brushes, and they're the they're the springy white acrylic stuff. You know, and they're just excellent for acrylic. Love. I know, Debbie, right? The, um, they're springy. That's why I like them for my acrylic. All right, so let's see what we can do here to take all these out. I'll tell you every... I'll try to keep them in order so I can tell you the sizes. We'll go through them one by one. This way you can see what the different kinds of brushes are if you don't already know. Because I think they've got pretty much all of them in here. <laughs> I don't know. I don't see. I, yeah, I see a filbert. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I know. I love the springiness too. You know. Okay. This one is. Let's see if I can. Um, all right. This is just a 2.5 angular, angular. Okay. Now, when I do house painting, like when I paint, when we moved into this house, how many rooms? One, two, three. So we've got the, the great room, the living room, the dining room, the kitchen, the hall, or the, I should say the entryway, three bedrooms, three baths. I painted this whole house in a week, top to bottom, inside, every wall, every, well, except going up the stairs because I couldn't reach the top of the stairs up there. Uh, that's the only place that has not been painted in this house. <clears throat> and most of the, well, all of the, uh, not this brand. I mean, I had a, uh, Purdy, a P-U-R-D-Y. The Purdy is the best brand for uh, cutting in. Cutting in and baseboards, but it's like this shape like this. So anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway, do you what? Nylon! Thank you, Jean! Thank you! <laughs> Jean, thank you! Jean, Jean save me! Nylon brushes! <laughs> I kept wanting to say acrylic. Nylon brushes. Thank you, sassy pants. Anyway, so the a little bit bigger than this, about an inch wide, maybe an inch and a half. Purdy, P-U-R-D-Y, the best cutting in and baseboard brushes there are. Anyway, that's what this one reminds me. Because see how you can get a nice look at that. There's not a there's not a straight line you couldn't make with that bad boy. Just saying. <laughs> Thank you, Jean. Nylon. i got to write that down because I know I'll forget that again. Nylon brushes. Oh. See, sometimes a word just slips your mind. Oh, no, this is just a cutting in. Then I do the rollers on the wall. Yeah, yeah, nylon brushes. Thanks, Jean. And I'm going to give you full credit for that. <laughs> um, yeah, no, the cutting in, you know, along the edges in the corners, along the top, and then you do the rolling. Yes, purdies are the best, aren't they? Anyway, these are not purdies. These are Royal Lang Nickel. These are for painting, on a painting, not on the wall. All right, the next one is a one and a half inch flat. That's just called a one and a half inch flat. Nylon bristle brush. <laughs> It's age. Go with it. Janet goes, it's age, Dee Dee. Go with it. <laughs> this one is a um, three-quarter flat. 
again, these are not things I'm going to use. They were just, it looks so cool, didn't it? With all of them in there. <laughs> so I got the set, you know, um, yeah. I have other ones this size that I still haven't used. I got hake brushes and I never use because I don't do oil painting and I, I just don't use them, you know. I'm not, I very rarely do a, a canvas painting, although I'll show you something I bought here in a minute. It's not canvas, but... All right, so let's go through. Let's start with the biggest ones. Okay, again, look, I'm going to show you how stiff these are. Look, now listen, listen. Hear it crunch? That's because there's sizing in there. You have to wash that sizing out. Couldn't see how did the entire house with the brush in a week. Yeah, no, no, Palm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't paint the whole house with a brush in a week. I got my um, builders. Um, I, I think it's a ten foot ladder, twelve foot ladder. His tall ladder, because there's a couple rooms in my house that have uh, fifteen feet ceilings. So, uh, and I'm not afraid of. I don't like to fly, but I'm not afraid of heights. I, I'll climb up on the top of a ladder and balance on one foot in a heartbeat. <laughs> climb up on a roof, any of that. Um, that kind of height doesn't bother me. So, um, anyway, no, I rolled the walls after I cut in. <laughs> okay, let's carry on here. All right, let's see. This is uh, number 24, uh, Filbert, a 24, and the Filberts are the rounded. See how that's rounded? It's not an angle, and it's not squared off. Like, this is a flat, and that's a Filbert. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when you get a brush and it's stiff, you got to wash that sizing out. You may want to, oh, my audio's loud. Oh, thanks, Jean. Sorry. Just now somebody's telling me an hour and, and 10 minutes in. <laughs> okay, I turned it down. Is that better, Jean? Because <laughs> I get excited and I get loud. <laughs> You never heard about sizing? Yeah. So when you get your brushes, <laughs> thanks, Jean. When you get your brushes and they're they're all the hairs like feel like they're glued together, it's because they have sizing in them. Okay. So anyway, this is a um, number 24 filbert. This one is, see, look, look, I can't even push on it. See how? So now let me wet it and get the sizing out. Okay, so now it's you know flexible and soft. Okay, you got to get that sizing out. This is a number 22 angle. Ang they call it angular, but an angle. Okay. And if after you're done, this is the best way to help your brushes too. Now, I know there's soap. There's special like, um, uh, what, you know, soap, uh, bars of soap for your brushes. I just, I got to say, guys, I just use whatever bar of soap I have handy. Probably not the best thing. And I am more careful with my uh sable uh, oils and all that stuff you know of course you don't use water and soap for those unless you're using water soluble oils which when i was doing oils i was not using water soluble oils i was using oil oils oil oils oils i was using oil oils anyway uh <laughs> um when you're done if you want to keep that nice crispness if you take your wet brush clean it out clean it really well and then just take your, like, let's just say this is your bar of soap. You take your bar of soap and just run it over your bar of soap. And then flatten it out and let it dry, okay? And it'll be nice and sharp and crisp. Now make sure you wa wash that soap out before you go, <laughs> you know, rinse. You always start with the wet brush. If you get in the habit of wetting your brush, even if you damp out all the excess water, Get your brush wet so that you're not just putting acrylic paint on your dry bristles. That is terrible for your brush brushes. Dry, uh, you know, I mean, acrylic paint, just dipping a dry brush into it. Even if you want to dry what's called dry brushing, you still want to get your bristles wet, pat it out, squeeze it out, whatever you want to do, but have the bristles cold to the touch, You'll, you know, so that they're wet. It's wet. And then you can still do a dry brush technique, even with damp bristles. But that's what I do with my brushes when I take the time to do it. When I go in the, you know, at the sink and clean out most of the time, I just use this. Here's my, um, let me just move this. Here's my, uh, 
this is what I usually use to clean out my brushes right there. As you can see, usually there's one side that's dirtier than the other because I'll clean out here, rinse out here, and then I keep a paper towel right underneath like this. So when I clean a brush, this is why I'm hard on my brushes. I do this. Clean it out, rinse it off, and then damp it off like this, okay? And I do that every time I clean a brush. Now, if after I did all that at the end of the day, if I would take this and do the soap thing and get a thing of soap and smash it out, my brushes would last a lot longer. Although I gotta say, Darcy Glam, when she was here, she said, oh my gosh, how do you keep your brushes so clean? <laughs> They'll stain. I mean, like this was a white, that was a white bristle at one point. They stain, you know, they'll stain. But they should still like the look. See how it's green? It's it's clean though, right? Okay, let's move along. Uh, I think we did that one. Okay, so the next one, again, see how stiff that is? Look, I can't even bend it. Now you could uncrunch it with just your fingers, but it's best. It's best if you put it in water and kind of swish off swish off that uh, sizing. Hey, Boney. Okay, so let's see. Let me dry that off. All right, so this one is a number 20 flat. Okay. I won't clean them all because it'll take too long. This one is a number 18 flat, a number 16 flat, Let's go to the flats here. Wait, this one I think is bigger. Well, maybe they're the same. Let's see. Do I get two of those? I don't know. Uh, a number 10, a 10 flat, a 10 flat. So it gave me two 10 flats. I'm trying to see if there's any other duplicates here. There might be on some of these tiny ones. All right, then this is a number 16 filbert. This is a number 14 angular. I just call it angles, but angular. Here is a number 12 round, and the rounds are like literally round. They're round brushes and pointy like this. Again, see how stiff that is? It's because there's sizing in it. See, I can't even bend it without getting it wet. So let me get that one wet, get all the sizing out of it. Okay, so see how it's a round brush? I don't know. It's completely round and pointy. Yes, it is a nice selection, isn't it? Okay, there's something on that one. What is it? If I can feel it. There's a little something on there. I don't think I picked it up in the water. There's a little, maybe it's just a little more sizing I need to rinse out. Okay. Then we have a number eight filbert. Again, the filberts are kind of, you know, they're not flat. They're, we're going to get the big one here, like this. See how they're rounded? It's not a round, though. A round is where the ferrule is round. These are like, you know, smashed, sort of. These are filberts. If there's a really good variety of brushes, there are not many big round brushes. Yeah, yeah. This is the only big round one in here. There's a couple other rounds, but uh, yeah, let's see what size. Okay, this is a uh, number, a number four angle, angular. These are my favorite brushes, and probably a number four would probably be my closest to my ve very favorite, because it's it's small enough but big enough to do what I do with them. You know, mixed media, art journaling, color booking, and the thing about them is, so you can have a nice, you can get a flat. You can get a straight line, and you can get a dot all in one brush. It's the versatileness of this brush. <laughs> okay, then we got a couple other ones here. This is a number, um, number six flat, a number four. This is a short angular. It's a bright. Yeah, a bright. It's, the, the brights are shorter. Okay, this one is, and my um, Badger Hair Bright was my favorite oil painting brush, just saying. Badger Hair. Um, number two flat, 
Okay, and then we got a bunch of smaller ones here. There might be a couple similar. This is a round. This is a number five round. Then the next one down is a number three round. Then we have a number two shader. This is called a shader. I don't know what the difference between this shader and a uh, filbert is because it's the same shape as a filbert, but they're calling it a shader. Uh, and let's see, a number one round. A number, I'm just getting hard to see here. I need to turn on another light. Why can't I even see that? Oh, it's a half, that's why. It's a half detail. It's a, a detail brush. It's a detail. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't name them those kind of things. Um, another detail. That's a zero. A zero detail. And a, what's this last one here? I guess I could just look at the box. This is a quarter detail. So, yeah, some detail brushes. So all that, all those in there. And again, it was the White Talon, uh, Talcon, um, Royal, Royal Lang Nickel. <laughs> I don't know about this. Um, Royal Lang Nickel, um, Nylon. Thank you, Jean. All of these were in that pack. How many were there? Didn't even, did it say I didn't even count? 25. 25 brushes for $25, but I had a 40% off coupon. So I got them all for about 15 bucks. Yay me. <laughs> and they're all not going to fit in this jar because this jar is already, these are the ones I'm currently using. I've got like five jars like this and a big box and my rolls of, pin, of brushes. These are just the ones I'm using right now. So anyway, these will have to have their own jar. I'm going to have to find a jar just for these babies. That's a heck of a deal, right? Do I have a jar handy? I love these little mason jars, but I think they're all full of things. So, I'll just set them to the side for now until I find a, a new, another jar for those. Okay. Then at Hobby Lobby, these two archival ink pads were on sale for $3.59, regularly $6. They're normally $5.99. This one's a Wendy Vecchi, and this one's a the Ranger. They're both made by Ranger, but, you know. Wendy Vecchi is the designer series. But it was cornflower blue. I've not ever had a cornflower blue. I was excited about this. Let's bust them open. <laughs> I have black archival ink. I love my black ar archival inks. And uh, so anyway, that, I, you know, for half price, I get the brown and a, and a cornflower blue. So let's bust these babies open. Yeah, these are in store. Yeah, these were at my Hobby Lobby. Now, if they're dried out, they'll be going back. <laughs> I actually have never, I have to say, guys, in all the years of buying ink pads, knock on wood, click, 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 um, I have never had a ink pad that was dried out when I bought it. Just saying, never have. Let me move this book out of the way. All right. So let's find a piece of cardstock. Oh, wait. What else did I buy? Oh. <laughs> I'm not going to test the ink on this, but I want to show you this. Um, this was some illustration art boards. There's only 10 in here. Normally $20. On clearance, $11.99. So I could not pass up these art boards. Don't ask me yet what I'm going to do on them. But they're thick they're like a, they're like a mat like a freight like mats like you know you frame your mats but it's even almost a little thicker than that so let me pull one out of the see i'll probably have to get an exacto knife i don't know if i can do it with a scissor so let's see i don't want to cut one out i want to just take one out there we go all right so let's do a little examination of these illustration boards <laughs> so anyway 
I have, now Hobby Lobby used to sell matte, leftover matte board, okay? Like, um, like if they cut the centers out of a mat, and I have them around here somewhere, <laughs> but they have texture, right, <clears throat> usually. And then usually the back side is smooth. If you've ever seen a mat, you know, like you frame something with a mat, y'all know what I'm talking about. One side usually has a texture. Sometimes they're smooth, but they usually have a texture. And the back side of those mats are usually smooth. And Hobby Lobby used to sell them in bundles, like 5x7, 8x10, I don't know if they went, and 12x12. 12 12. And they would sell uh, like a stack this big for like, I don't even remember, a five, seven, eight? I don't remember because it's been some years since they, uh, they had them. But when they were, uh, I'd get them all the time with a 40% coupon. So I'd buy stacks of mat board for nothing. And then they quit selling it. So somehow I think they got wind that they were onto something with that stuff <laughs> and quit selling it because it was just in bulk. Like they just had it like shrink wrapped. It wasn't even like packaged in like, you know, any kind of brand or anything. Yeah, well, yeah, some of them, they're kind of can. Well, they're not really can. These are not canvas at all, Jean. These are smooth. Uh, and the mat board that you frame things with, some are textured and some are smooth, right? But what they were selling was like the insides, like they'd cut a mat, right? And the centers, they'd have stacks of them for sale, just shrink wrapped for like five, eight bucks. You know, probably the 12 by 12 ones were maybe eight bucks for like 50. I mean, I'm talking stacks. And, uh, yeah, so, yeah, but they could have recycled them and sold them to us, Sue Ben. So, and Sue Ben, are you the Sue Ben that I follow on Instagram that makes those dolls? I wanted to shout you out if you're the same Sue Ben. Are you the Sue Ben that makes those dolls? Because I got to show that. Let me, let me find that picture. Tell me if you're that Sue Ben, because these are awesome, and I wanted to shout you out if this is you. Let's see. I saved one of your pictures. No, I'm thinking that's a Sue. Are you Sue B? Okay, Sue Ben here. Are you Sue B on Instagram? I'm still going to show the picture whether it's you or not, but yeah. <laughs> but it's Sue B on Instagram. And, and there's a lag. I have to wait for it to catch up. Hey, Vicky. So anyway, these are smooth. These are really smooth. It's, you know, not, it's not textured at all, Jean. I don't know how well, I'm sure they'd work with watercolor. I've never used this particular Canson illustration board. And the only reason I bought it was because it was half price. I wouldn't have bought it for 20 bucks. So, but because they were, you know, 12 bucks, okay, 12 bucks. No, you didn't make it. Okay, well then let me show you these. This is Sue B. This is Sue B on Instagram, if y'all want to go find her. Look at these, look at these dolls. And I thought, is that our Sue Ben? But it's somebody else. But look at these little dolls. Yeah, that's Sue, Sue B, B-E-E, -E, on Instagram. Aren't those cute as little buttons? Right, button attic? <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to shout that out, because I wasn't sure if it was you. Okay, so anyway, these are perfectly smooth. I've been streaming an hour and a half, Vicky, and I am recording. It's color book and haul. I, this is uh, this is my uh, right now. This is my uh, Hobby Lobby haul. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry, Vicky. Aren't those cool? So anyway, it's ten of them, and see how thick they are. They're thick like like your mat board. It's like it's it's heavier than, or at least as heavy as our chipboard. Really, it's even heavier. And they're real sturdy. They're real stiff, okay? They're, they're made to not buckle, right? So I'm sure you could use water on them. Um, ink marker pencil is what they're saying. So, you know, watercolor, maybe, you know? 
I mean, I, I don't know how much water it would take without pilling. But it's Canson. Um, yeah, so I got these. Now, I do have my cheap mat boards, like literally the kind that you mat paintings with. Stacks of them put away somewhere. I hate to say it, I cannot find them. They are probably in my shipping closet um, where, you know, my, where I store my, you know, packing stuff. Uh, so I'm thinking they may be in there. You can get these from Amazon? Okay. You would have to put a ground on it for watercolor, Jean is saying. Yeah. Well, I, what I'll probably do, maybe on Monday, Jean, is I will take one and we'll do experiments on one. We'll do some water, we'll do some marker, we'll do some pens, we'll do some, we'll, we'll use one for a test sheet, okay? So, again, they're Canson, you know, maybe that's some of the same kind of thing they use for matting. Um, it, I mean, some of the, because the, the mat boards that you buy in those bundles were all different ones. You'd have a black one, a brown one, a green one, some pink, white, but the, I use the backs of them, and they didn't have Canson on the back. And you could use the backs of almost all of them were white. So all you have to do, even if this was textured in those bundles of matte pieces, just turn it over and you got a white board. You see? Yeah. So if, you, if you're ever at a frame shop or even Hobby Lobby, I don't know, you know, maybe your Hobby Lobby will still sell them. Check and see. Mine quit a couple, maybe a year ago. Maybe a little longer, because I haven't checked for a while, because they said they stopped at my Hobby Lobby. So, I don't know. Um, but you could always just buy mat board. You can buy pieces of mat board. You could buy a big, you know, a 40 by 60 piece of mat board and have them cut it down for you. A huge piece of mat board is probably under 10 bucks, And you could get, like, maybe six out of this, six of these, out of a big sheet of mat board. And you could get off-white, white, you know, or ask them if they have any scraps, you know, to play with. But anyway, again, the only reason I bought these is because they were on sale for half price. So for 12 bucks, 10 pieces, you know, a dollar, you know, I'm, I'm paying like a dollar 10 for each one of these, you know, I figured, yeah. So that's what I got at Hobby Lobby. Now let's go back to our two ink pads. <laughs> Here, Vicky, we just went through this. I bought these, Vicky. <laughs> I just I just showed each and every one of these, Vicky. You missed it. Okay, so let's let me get a piece of, of uh, just cardstock to uh, test this out on. I never can find a piece of anything when I need it. Here we go. Here's a piece of something we use for something. All right. And let's see. Let me just find a stamp here. <clears throat> Do I want this one? Here. Let's try one of my hand carved. Here's one of my hand carved stamps. I haven't carved any stamps in a while either. Okay. This is um, Haraman. Haram. Oh, I never can say his name. Hieronymus Bosch, <laughs> the guy that did uh, the Garden of Delights paintings back in the, uh, I can't say his name, don't make me, okay, <laughs> I have to think about it, I can say it, okay, so here's the brown one, so let's just, ooh, it's nice and juicy, let's just juice him up here, and usually it takes two you know, I'll stamp this big. It'll usually take two um, prints to get it completely juiced up. So let's just make sure. Heronim Heronimus? Is that right? Heronimus. I know someone's going to message me in the comments on YouTube. <laughs> Heronimus? Okay, let's go on this. All right, so let's just test. And I think this, well, you know what? Where's my stamp pad thing? Here. Let's do it correctly so Rach0113 doesn't yell at me. I got my old um, stamping mat here. All right, now it's probably a little dry. <laughs> character in the Michael Con <laughs> Oh, that's also a character in your Michael Connolly novels, Jean? I don't, I don't think I've read a Michael Connolly. 
Although, Jan, uh, Quail Hill Jan, she knows how much I love Cadfell. And she, you know, even when she went to um, uh, overseas and got, um, let's see if I can print this. Hang on, let me concentrate a minute. I'm going to stand up and put some pressure on it. Uh, got me Cadfell. Went to the monasteries and places that were based on Cadfell. She told me about another series I'm going to look into in the same time frame as Cadfell, but it's a nun. Oh, I can't wait. Okay, so let's see here. Yeah. This is, it's kind of a red. It's kind of a plum. It's plum. It's not brown. I just went by this. It's plum, which is fine. I don't have a plum one either. So there we go. So there's, he was named after the artist. Okay. All right, Jean. I didn't know that, but I bet I'd like those books. I bet I'd like anybody named after him. I'd probably like those mysteries, Jean. I need to probably write that down. Okay, so there he is in Plum. Mr. Plum. <laughs> or is that Mrs. Plum in the conservatory? Okay, now I'm, uh, I'm going to get a baby wipe to get the excess ink off there. <laughs> Am I saying it right, Jean? Hieronymus? Hieronymus, I think. Hieronymus. I think I'm saying that right. And it's a permanent ink, so it's, you know, once it dries, I don't care if they stain. Uh, I still have some wet here, but these are permanent, so once they're dry, it's, uh, you know, won't go anywhere. Just like that's why he's got, he's black ink, because I've used him so much with black ink. Hieronymus. <laughs> with the candles, yeah. Well, yeah, it says plum on there, which I didn't even pay attention to when I bought it. See, it looks brown, right? Doesn't that look brown? Same author as a Lincoln lawyer. Great. Oh, what was the name of Jean again? Tell me the name of the, because it's scrolled off. What was the name of the uh, author again? I'll write it down. <clears throat> yeah, but his first name, Hieronymus. I think I've got it now. <laughs> Hieronymus? Hieronymus? Okay. <laughs> Everybody's correcting me phonetically. I'm getting the phonetics of it in there now. <laughs> and I have studied his symbology. I did, I, I have charts and lists and drawings of all his uh, symbology in his paintings. Michael Connolly, okay. With two N's, thanks Jean. But the one that, um, what do you call it, Jan, um, and how I remember it is because Ellis Peters is the woman that wrote Cadfell. Well, the man that wrote this series, Sister, and I have it written down, just look for Peter Ellis. Instead of Ellis Peters, who wrote Cadfell. So I'm not sure if um, Peter Ellis is his real name. I'm, maybe. I mean, that's what he is if you uh, uh, search him. But he wrote a series on Sister, and I can't remember who it is. It's about a nun. It's in the same time period as Cadfell. Thank you, Terry Treble. All right, so now let's do the blue. And then we're going to do black. <laughs> just call him Ron. <laughs> Vicky. Vicky said just call him Ron. Anyway, if you have not seen his uh, art, <laughs> it's all kinds of symbology. Anyway, all right, moving on. Let's go with the um, cornflower, cornflower blue, Wendy Vecchi Ranger archival ink pad. Okay, so here we go. Let's look at the cornflower blue. Okay, why is it a little loose? Okay, for some reason it's loose in there. Okay, it's loose. Like it needs to be glued down. Well, let's let's take that off and look under there. It looks like. I was wondering if it was double-sided tape, but it just needs to be glued down. So I'm going to just take my Eileen's Tacky, and let's make sure this is glued down really well. Now, of course, it's not going to stay glued. I mean, it's not going to dry right this second. But I want that. I don't want it moving. I don't want it moving when I'm trying to use it. Now, let's see if I can still. Maybe I'll go this way now. 
that'll put some pressure on where I glued it too, right? But it was kind of shifting. Let's see if I can get the whole thing here. I'm looking at it. Now, don't don't email me if I don't get this one stamped well. Anyway, I hand carved this guy. I hand carved Ronnie when I was studying all his symbology. Okay, let me stand up and put some pressure. Harry. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a pretty cornflower blue. There's a couple little bit of purple still in there. But that's a pretty cornflower blue, isn't it? That's nice. I like it. It's now that I've, you know, really smashed down the glue underneath, it's probably good to go. Cornflower blue. And anyway, I got these for three dollars and a quarter, regularly six. So yeah. I don't have either one of those colors, especially plum. I thought I was buying brown, but I got plum. Mr. Plum and Corn Miss Cornflower in the library, <laughs> in the conservatory. <laughs> okay, I'm going to write that down. Jean recommends. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now let's do him in black. So, going to my black. Now, this may be dried out because I have not used this. No, it's still working. Uh, I haven't used this in, in, wow, months. But it still looks like it's good. And what I'm doing is kind of stamp and just giving it a little bit of a twist, just a little bit, like kind of getting the juice out of the stamp pad, kind of. I probably should have cleaned that off, shouldn't I have? <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, so let's go here. Again, I'm going to stand up and put some weight on it. Look, Vicki, I even got out the stamp pad. Rach would be proud of me. Okay, and that's how I usually stamp it, in black. Right? Oh, no, I made him, um, I made him jiggly. I gave him a little, um, <laughs> you know, wave. We need to redo that. Okay, let's redo him. Wait, i got to find another piece of paper. See, Rach would not be proud of me. All right, here's another. Because I made him, I made him googly-eyed. <laughs> I made him a little shaky. Well, not shaky, wavy. I can't be moving around when I stamp him. Or you can do this, too. Let's try it this way. I'm going to push, put it on here and just gently rub. Let's see if I get a better impression. Yeah. Let's see if this... Because this is a large stamp. The larger ones are a little... Hey, Marilyn! The larger ones... And I think I shifted it again. I think I felt it shift. We'll see. His vision is blurred. Yeah, let's see. There we go. That's better. See the difference between the two? See what a good imprint makes? <laughs> Ron was having a party. His vision blurred. Oh my gosh, Vicky. So anyway, when I usually use my archival black ink, like on my rubber carved rubber, I now never clean it off. I just let it dry. I know that's terrible, but it's it's waterproof and you know it's not going anywhere once it's dry. I just let it dry on there. So yeah, probably a bad move, but there you go. Um, so yeah, there's that. And I do have this one too, and I do have the refill. I got this big mama jamba, and I have a refill somewhere around here. I'm not sure where it is. But I usually just use the little one, but you can use either one. Thanks, Jean. Nicely done. Yeah. Okay. So let's see what else do we have for show and tell. I think I'll put that back on the shelf. Um. Wait. What is this? Oh, that's Adirand Adirand the 
Adirondack, I have eggplant. I just saw it on the shelf. But this is a pigment. What's this one? This is, um, I know they're probably two different things. Somebody can tell me. But I have the eggplant, and now this is the plum. And then I have now have the cornflower blue. I don't ever stamp anymore, guys, unless it's just something I've carved, you know? <laughs> unless it's just something I carved myself. Okay. So, I do have a stamp around here that says don't email me. I forgot who sent that to me. It might have been Laurel. Um... Okay, so let me move my stamp pad. I think this was my, uh, well, I got my color books that I ordered in. So that was my uh, most excitement. But this is real exciting for me because I love me some new brushes. Jean probably like, likes this too. But if y'all missed it, I did a little mini, kind of a mini flip. I got the Mysterious Library because of Laura, uh, Art Anxiety Adventures. I got the Myth and Magic, and I got the Manic Botanic, and I did flips. If you're just coming in, <clears throat> Vicky, I did flips of all these uh, at the throughout the hour and 45 minutes. You like the Adirondack? Is permanent. Vicky said it's a pigment one. Okay. Yeah, I, you know, I gave away all my, I think I have a little bit of embossing powders around here. I think I kept a couple because of the cool colors, but I pretty much gave all my, like I have this one, look at this one. This is a jelly powder one, but I pretty much gave all my embossing stuff away because I never used it, guys. I, I just quit embossing anything. I kept a couple colors just because they were pretty. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, I'm think, looking around, see if there's anything else. Um, new or done. Um, oh, I did finish. Let me, let me clean, let me wash my hands before I touch a color book. I, I had pretty much finished the uh, page in here with the door. I'm, the reason I'm bringing this out now is because Laura's also got this book now. And she's going to work in it too. Um, <clears throat> and if y'all missed it, this is the one I uh, bought. Uh, I got this off Amazon too. About uh, um, maybe right for my birthday. And I've been working in this one with, just mar with the Crayola markers. And just kind of working here and there. And playing a little bit. This is a, this is the only page I've made any kind of progress on. <laughs> Mel G bought it. I know. I'm sorry. We all enable each other. What can I say? So this is as far as I got on this page. And I did paint the background with black acrylic. That's the only way that you can get these um, nice feathered glows and rays on top of black well you can get it on top of it like this is pre-printed right but this had a white background so if i would have put black pencil there's no way you could get that to go on top of black pencil so it's black i did paint all the black acrylic and all this you see here is pencil ray that all this up here that's all pencil ray but this is started with uh, just those Crayola markers, the kids' ones, these, these babies, the cheap ones, 50 of them for 10 bucks. Use a 40, 50% 50 off coupon. You can get 50 of them for five bucks. And they last a long time, guys. I am so surprised. They're Crayola. They're, de you know, they're good. And they're water based and they don't go through as long as you don't scrub, scrub, scrub. Like here, I, I did these little um, cactus here. Nothing goes through. However, when I, the first page I started using them, I thought, I didn't think. 
I didn't think about, and here's where I'm doing a lemon slice one. I didn't think about um, it going through. I just didn't think because it never really ever goes through a color book page as long as you don't scrub with it. Well, I was sitting in front of the TV and I was coloring. Where's that page? I think it's it. Um, there's my little teal apples there. So where is it? I think I passed it. The purple one here. This one. So this is the first one I started. And I wasn't really thinking or paying attention. So I was just coloring, 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 coloring one spot over and over and over. Trying to get it nice and smooth. Forgetting about, oh, that might go through if you don't stop. As long as you just do a little bit of color, it's, it's fine. But it almost went through. Look, see how it ghosted right there? And, and that was with coloring like a real heavy, heavy concentrated coloring. And it still didn't go through, but it, it almost did. So as long as you just color, you know, like look at this. I did it like a red heart, dark green marker, bright red and orange marker. It didn't go through. Now the yellow, of course, is this side. I mean, you know, the yellow is from coloring her. But it didn't go through. So as long as you're careful not to over scrub your Crayola um, markers, it's fine. And then you can see here where I started shading with pencil. See the dark blue? See, like there's the light blue with no shading. And then there's where I started shading. So, yeah. So I just, you know, just kind of whatever I felt like coloring. I just picked up a marker. And if I wanted to do something on that page, I just did something on that page and moved on. <laughs> I don't feel, I just don't, you know, now if, if we're coloring something on a stream and I'm doing like a demo, then, and I try to color as much as I can in a page or a couple, two, three parts, I'll try to finish a page. But I, I don't mind doing this. I'll just color a little this tonight, a little bit this tomorrow, next day. <laughs> It just doesn't bother me to like work all around in a page so yeah so that's as far as I got on any um, fin you know fuller page done and I still have all the you know little elements to do but all the little stars are all hand-drawn all the rays you see that's all pencil on top of acrylic this is dark you know green two shades of green ray on top of black acrylic and then some orange um, glow around the fire with pencil. Bye Zandra, thanks for stopping in. So anyway, what I was going to say is Laura's going to, she's <laughs> it's so funny when I watched her, she said, I'm not cutting those doors out. <laughs> See, I cut them out, you know, the doors that go on the birdhouses. She goes, I'm, I couldn't desecrate the book. I couldn't cut that out. <laughs> well, you know me. I cut them right out. And we put them on the page. Here's the, so what I did is I did do a little bit more work on this to completely finish it. Because when I took a photograph of it to post, even to the, webs, to the Facebook group that this girl has. Uh, I don't know her name. Uh, Claire Mar Markova. Claire, Clara Markova has a Facebook group. With, for this book, I didn't show these doors open because I had not finished the insides. Well, I did finish them. So now they're finished on the inside. So there's that one. The little bedroom. I did this one like a little pink bedroom. And again, all the stars and everything like that. And a little, like a little lantern. So I put the little glow marks there. I can't get too much closer because I don't have, I have the autofocus so it doesn't zoom in and out. So there's that. And the backs of these doors are just white. I had to make my own wood grain on the back side because there's nothing on the back side of these when you cut them out. So I couldn't leave it plain. And then this one did blue. And it's like a little leaf, a little leaf hammock. And again, made a little lantern, colored the little dressers and the rug, and had to do my own wood grain on the back. And 
so and then the little hinges and then I did add a little bit more um, little white to the key and I know everybody says that looks like a sock monkey right there I did kind of there he had some like pupils in there and kind of got rid of those um, but I did highlight some of the chain and the metal on the key and so yeah so I did finish this because those weren't um, these weren't finished on the inside when I posted the picture so I, I wanted that done and that's all I've done in this. Oh, and I did do a swirl on here that needs to be put into tan. I wanted to lighten up this swirl, this burl in the tree, but I don't want it white. So I've got to go back over it with this tan color. Work that in. There's a couple places. I missed a couple places, but I'm not going to repost it because everybody saw everything except the insides of the door. I know, isn't it just the cutest thing ever to cut those doors out? And there's another one, this one, this right here, this door. And see, they give you a little flap. So what I did is on the back side, I you cut a slice. Um... Oh, thanks, Lisa. That's nice. You cut a little slice in the door spot or the door hinge, like it goes behind there, and then I just taped it on there. So it, there you go. You can see. See, it comes with a little flap so that you can, it'll, you know, stay secure like that. And then this door right here, this one, goes on top of the locket which is this one so that when you put see the little dotted line so you cut it right there on the dotted line here I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out I'm not gonna color it right now but I'll just show you how it works <clears throat> and I'm not gonna tape it in because I don't do that until I at least get it um, going because you don't want to try to color behind a hinge that would be a while you want to at least do that before you, but I'll show you how it works here. Because that one has a little fairy inside the locket, and this covers it up. So if you have any questions while I'm fussy cutting for just a second. I know Laura was here. She could be having a hissy because I'm cutting into the perfect book. <laughs> hey Valerie, anybody else popping in I missed? I'm just cutting off this little door that goes on top of the locket that hides the fairy in the locket. And this paper's pretty thick. It's, it's not cardstock, but it's Probably, I don't have Janet's little measuring tool. I'm guessing 65 pound, maybe? I don't think it's 90. Let's say maybe 65. I'm guessing le lepi, whatever. I think that means cut in check. <laughs> um... Yes, I know. She was thinking the same thing. Vicki, Laura would be freaking out. Okay, so let's go over to the locket. Here. Now, you definitely want to put something behind it, right? Um, let me get a cutting mat here. Where's my little cutting mat? I got a little one here. here. Hang on, there's stuff on top of it. Let me get my little close to my heart cut mat out. I'm going to put it under here. Get my exacto knife. Which probably needs a fresh blade. But it might get one more cut. <laughs> okay, so what you do, and let me just make sure, yeah. They have dotted lines there, so I make sure I only have one page. <laughs> Is, you know, I'm just going to cut 
right there on the dotted line. And then what you do, and again, I would color some of this first because it's going to be too hard to color around this if I tape it in. Sample pictures from this coloring book is a link to the Coloring Queen's blog where she has a coloring contest. Well, you can post a link, Beth. I won't have time to enter a coloring contest. But anybody here, go ahead and look at Coloring Queen's. She put, Beth put the link in here, but go check, I mean, peruse the awesomeness that is the Coloring Queen. She has a contest going. Thank you, Beth. Okay, so now I've got that cut. And so what you do is you just got your little flap and you put it in the little thing here. And what I would do, oop, i got to cut it just a little bit more. Gonna make it just a little bigger. Let's see if that's good enough. Okay, so again, see how it's white on the back? I'll have to paint this. Oh, the contest is closed. Oh, well, then never mind. If you're watching this, don't go over there and enter a contest. It's closed. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so anyway, I will have to paint the back of this like metallic or something because I don't like, I won't want this white when everything else is colored, right? So here we go. This is what it's going to look like, right? And what I'll do later is I'll put a piece of tape here to hold it so this won't fall out. <clears throat> so when you've got it done coloring, you got this locket. See? And then you open up the locket, and there's the little fairy inside. Isn't that cute? So, yeah. So that's the same thing that I did with these doors to the little bird houses. And then painted the inside of the door with the faux wood grain. <laughs> I know, wasn't that such a great idea for her to come up with these little doors? She should have, I wish she would have had more. Because I think that would have been awesome to have even more. But she just had the three. And then there's the little picture of which page you're supposed to use it on. Because it's all in check. It's none of it's in English, so you got to kind of figure it out by visual it, visualizing it. <laughs> and that's all I've done in this book. So I probably should put a tiny, tiny bit of piece of tape because that this might fall out, and then I'll be, I'll be sad. And so would Laura. So I'm just going to put. I'm not going to completely tape it in, but I just want a little piece of Scotch tape there just so that the door doesn't come out. I'll take it out when I want to color right in here and then, you know, tape it back in, but I don't want to lose it. Yeah. So that's all I've done in this book. I want to do more in it, but, and, and on this one, I don't want to paint any of the backgrounds black. I want to leave them all the cream, kind of cream color background. So um, all the backgrounds I want to have like all those little dots I, I don't know they look like little pollen to me you know little pollen or little um you know seed flying seed you know pollen things i want them to sh i want them to show so i'm not going to paint any of the backgrounds at this moment in my head i'm not going to paint any of the backgrounds a color i might have a little bit of you know shading like a sun glow or something, but I'm going to try to keep all the backgrounds unpainted. Oh, I forgot I had done this one. Well, I'm not done. It's halfway done. I forgot I'd started on this, uh, the perfume bottle. Totally forgot I'd done this, guys. But you can see I still have some more to go. But you can see how I put a little shine there on the bottle. But it's, yeah, I'm glad I flipped to the front. So, yeah. And I think this is called Magical Delight. I think that's the translation. That's what we came up with when I first did this page. Magical Delight. Uh, Clara Markova. So, yeah. So, that's all I got, guys. That's all I got. It's a little dark here, but I, when I was showing all these pages with white, I figured that it's best to have it a little on the dark side than too bright and flashed out because that flashes out the color book pages.
so any questions or anything I figured I'd share that for those who like the book want to spend money because of oh okay all right so anything else guys before I head out I plan on streaming on Monday I'm looking around see if there's anything else I've done Wait. Oh, um, I still haven't finished, I fin haven't quite finished this. This is, Kenny sent me this last week. I have not quite finished it. Um, I got, you know, a little bit of shading here to do. So I posted a work in progress photo of this on Instagram and Twitter. But I, this is the only page I've, obviously, she just sent it to me last week. Yeah. So that's it, guys. Um... Orla sent me this, and I want to work in this next week as well, in Wild, Bennett Klein's Wild. I'm not sure what page I want to do out of this, but, um, I, I, you know, I love me some Bennett Klein. Oh, look, a Pedro. <laughs> we name all our octopus Pedro. It's kind of like a thing. <laughs> so, hey, Teresa Crafting, I didn't see you there. Thanks, Marilyn, for being here. Charlie Girl, anybody else I might have missed? And um, I don't know if Paula's streaming tonight. Does anybody heard? Okay, good, good. I'm so glad you got to pop in, Debbie. Debbie has starts back to teaching on Monday. Um, thanks, Mel G. Um, does anyone know Paula Journal Artista is streaming? She usually streams Wednesday nights and Saturday nights when she's not working. But we never know unless, you know, till she tweets and I haven't heard. So, but uh, y'all make sure and peruse the awesomeness that is Paula. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to head out and uh, we'll see you on Monday or, you know, different streamers. Some of the streams tomorrow. I, I usually don't make Paula's late night streams, but. Once in a while, I'll watch her, you know, not chatting because I'm usually in bed. <laughs> but anyway. Okay, guys. No other questions? All right. Then we'll see you on Monday. I got to remember to do that giveaway. I got to do my packs of giveaway on Monday. Don't want to forget that. Maybe Terry Trouble will remind me. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later. Bye.